Um, <clears throat> on the retro check, there's any way that we can have the option if you want to roll that money to a 401k or 457 to avoid taxes and stuff like that? We're working on that right now. That conversation took place with the bosses during these negotiations. Um, there's two questions with the retro, whether or not it goes on a separate check or in the same check, and whether or not we can fold it into a 401k. There's precedent for MTA employees folding it into a 401k, and we're working on that. So we're going to work on that. We should have something on that shortly. Thank you, Sammy. Thank you, Sammy. The question is, uh, I was money. reading the brief, and basically it said the universal pass would only be for outside members. Can you also add the inside members that want to perhaps use the uh, Metro or LIRR as a courtesy? Yeah, what I, what I just got done answering that question. The company fought the use of our people to use this system to come to work. They fought it tooth and nail, and it was one of the stumbling blocks in this contract. The, 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 the idea that everybody will be able to use this system, it's going to get addressed next contract. There's, not, there's only so many things that I can fix in a contract. There's only so many things that can be, that can be mended up. And for me, getting the folks that work out on the island that have to pay to use the system is a fantastic start. It's a foot in the door, and we're going to expand off it. Yo, here, Gary S. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm doing a. I'm in the process of doing a dental procedure right now, and the dentist informed me that I have to kick out at least five hundred and seventy-five dollars to complete the whole procedure. I guess, I don't know, it's a co-payment or whatever. How, with this new contract, you, would you say about half or, th or, or three quarters of that will, be, will disappear? Yeah. Have an idea? I would tell you, you should not get any more dental work done unless it's an emergency until we implement this dental plan. That's what I'll tell you. That's what I'll tell you because we have, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna have the, the details of the dental plan out. We're fine tuning it right now, but it's gonna get released soon. We have a managed care option and a PPO option with collectively there's 7,500 dentists in the New York area that are participating, as opposed to a clinic atmosphere. Yeah. If you took one option on American Dental, which is, you know, take your kids to that one time and then you're going to another dentist. You're gonna find a dentist that you gotta pay out of your pocket. That's all done. On the managed care option, almost everything is for free, including, including orthodontics for your children. If you go into the managed care and you have two kids like I do, that are going into years where they're gonna need orthodontics, you're gonna have $8,000 in your pocket that you would have never had had we not won this benefit on the dental. So, would implants be in that? On the I'm not sure I don't have it in front of me, but I guarantee you that if it's costing you that much under the existing plan, right. that it'll be, it's either gonna be free or significantly discounted under the, under the plan that we're bringing to you. Significantly. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. On pay progression from three years to five, that on promotions too, or no. just through the door? And then no. That, we had a big fight about that as well. In the, in, in the company's original proposal, they they envisioned a um, a progression for every time you got promoted. We wrote lock solid, lock solid language in the contract that says you can't be on a wage progression to top pay for more than five years, regardless of how many times you promote. So that's it. If you promote, you're gonna go. You 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 can't get put into another progression. So it's still three years. It's still, it's five years in total. So if you promote after four years, they can give you one more year of a, of a, of a one more year of a, um, of a wage progression, and then they can't do it anymore. It, it ends at five. If you have seven years when you promote, there's no, there, there's no five year, there's no five year progression. So if you think here, let's say for 10 years, you took a promotion, you have to wait five years to get the top title. No, 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 I'm saying the opposite. I'm saying the opposite. Yeah. You get the top pay for that title yeah. immediately. One, one second, Steve. Go ahead. In regards to this medical work, gonna get. Uh, how does that work with high rider? People that are paying into the high rider option right now. So nothing changes with the high rider option. You continue to pay at the same cost if you want it. But it would be my belief that when you, if you're in the high option rider, as many people are because of the GHI dental, it would be my belief that when you look at this dental plan, you're going to get rid of the high option rider and save that money every month as well. So, and that's a big chunk of change for a family. Steve. It's, a, it's, a, it's real money. Steve, did you say about Metro North gets a pass too, if you take if you live upstate? Absolutely. All right, Steve. You know how much money that saves somebody, for, for instance, that lives in Brewster? 
Yeah. Well, we have a lot. There's a lot of transit workers in Bruce. It's got to be four or five hundred bucks a month. Four fifty. Yeah. Well, it's back in your pocket. It's back in your pocket, and that's real money. That's significant money. So let me let me just talk. Like, there's a couple of other points I want to make. Okay. Okay. Uh, Oh no, you got it ready now. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh oh. Uh, first of all, I'd like to know. Um, no, in the past, ever since I've been on this job here, we have always signed three year contracts. Why a five year contract this time around? Yep. Can I answer and that and then you'll ask the next one? Yes, sir, if it's okay with you. All right, so a three year contract, had we signed a three year contract, it would have expired in about six months and we would have been right back in a massive in a massive contract fight with the company again with part-time bus operators, Opto, and every other thing that we just closed the door on. Guys, now the Long Island Railroad, right. the president of the point of the committee to, to negotiate their contract, and the arbitrator ruled that they should uh, be given like 2.83% for the next six years. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't it have been better for us to probably try the arbitration route? Absolutely not. Like and absolutely not, and I'll tell you what. First of all, the Long Island Railroad contract includes years in that wage, in that in that 2.87 percent that you're talking 2 .8 about, 2.83, it includes years that expired before our 2012 expiration, years that we already got a 4 percent and a 3 percent wage increase. So if you look at the Long Island Railroad PEB recommendations, by the way, they're just recommendations. There's nothing binding on anybody. The Long Island Railroad may very well be forced to strike to get that to get those wages. So if you look at going forward. The way, and, and the, the wages going forward are not 2.83 because you have to take off the wages that they got retroactively that we've already been paid. And, and I think we made a four and a three in 2010 and 2011, the year before the contract expired. Yeah. On top of that, the Long Island Railroad PEB recommended that they pay an additional two and a quarter percent on health benefits with no wage improve, with no benefit improvements whatsoever. So in other words, in order for us to, to go to arbitration and argue that the economic value of that contract, which is 2.83. What are we talking about for six years? We're talking about almost 16%, which is double what we what Yeah, we but you're talking about also years prior to 2012, where they're without a contract, where we had wage increases. If you're talking about 2012 going forward, the PEV recommendation has them jack, jacked up to two and a quarter percent on health care, which would put us at 3.75% on health care to get the same wages rather than the, 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 the minimal increases in health care that we have right now without any benefit improvements whatsoever. So the Long Island Railroad PEB didn't address the dental, it didn't address the optical, it didn't address several of the other benefits that I'm going to speak about in a minute, which are maternity leave for the first time paid, maternity leave for the first time paid, lifetime spousal coverage for the first time. None of that was addressed in the, in the Long Island Award. And perhaps the, the most compelling reason is that we're not, the, the Long Island Railroad workers, the unions on the Long Island Railroad, have no threat whatsoever of getting bound to a New York City patent, a New York City public sector patent. The last contract that we settled, we were bound to a New York City wage patent that was set that happened to be 11% over three years. No such patent exists right now. The only patent that exists right now is the state patent of three zeros and five grand a year for health benefits. The Long Island Railroad workers have no binding arbitration provision. The company cannot drag them into arbitration and try to bind them to three zeros. And on top of that, the New York City public sector unions are bargaining with de Blasio right now, and anybody who's read the paper will know that de Blasio is trying to settle nine-year contracts with three zeros in them. So we have, if we waited for the Long Island Railroad, we have every chance of them settling a contract with 2.83, even though there's a massive health care increase, and the MTA dragging us into binding arbitration and slapping us with several zeros that de Blasio would settle when he creates a, a public sector patent in New York City. And the Long Island Railroad um, unions have no danger of getting bound to that patent. We are in extreme danger of getting bound to that patent. So the quick answer is that I'm the president of a 36, of 36,000 members, 36, members employed by the MTA. I'm responsible for our livelihoods and I'm, and I'm elected to make calls about protecting our families and I believe that I made the best call and struck the best deal that we could have struck at the moment regardless of what happens with the Long Island Railroad. I have a lot of other questions, but I don't want to ask you. Okay. Somebody yeah. asked me to ask you this question though. Uh, Mo, somebody said Mo, one of the yeah, best Mo. operators. Yeah, uh, he matter. said, how can we can flip this percentage around? Like instead of going from uh, one, 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 why can we go like two, two, two? He's a mathematician. Be, 
Well, the answer to the question, if he's a mathematician, is that the contract, the, the state would have never settled that contract with us. Never. Never. The state was fighting to get part-time bus operator or opto to give any retroactive wage increases at all. Right until the last moment when we signed this contract, they were convinced that they were going to be able to get part-time bus operator or opto um, at a bus to get any wage increases retroactively paid. And we resisted and resisted to the end, and we got the retroactive pay. Um, to flip it around, the state would have dragged us into binding arbitration. We would have never had that opportunity. Folks have to realize, everybody has to realize, particularly the folks that are, that, that are being very blasé about people's livelihoods here, if we get dragged into binding arbitration and de Blasio establishes a New York City pattern that has zeros in it over the next five years going forward, we are screwed as a union. But a lot of right? the unions said it wasn't going to go for that. It does, he could drag them into binding arbitration. It, it doesn't matter what they say. Listen, the te there's going to be recommendations announced very shortly on a, on, a, on a UFT contract for the teachers. That contract is likely going to have a couple of zeros in it. That's going to begin to set the framework for a New York City pattern that we could potentially get bound to. So instead of having retroactive pay and massive benefit improvements, we might have zeros with, with, with massive out-of-pocket benefit um, expenditures. He has to make a couple of points. So so yeah, let me make a couple of points, and I'll get to you right after that. A Cu couple of things I left out, although I did touch on them later on. We, we made some precedent-setting gains here that have never been seen before. For the first time ever, we have paid maternity leave, and not only that, paid paternity leave. If you're a woman and you work for the New York City Transit Authority right now, you get pregnant, you're you only, have a baby. You're only 30 years you're, late with that part for me. You're only, hey, <laughs> my first contract. My first contract. <laughs> right now, if you're a woman, you have a baby, you go into your, your own leave balance immediately. Immediately. So for the, we're, we're going to make every move to expand this. Again, you can't settle everything you want in a contract. You can't get everything you want in a contract. But we got our foot in the door in an unprecedented way. If you're a woman and you have a baby and you work for this transit authority, you get two weeks off. But even more so. But even more so, if you, if you, if it, because there are more men um, who have babies than women, because there's so many more men on this job than women. Not that men actually have babies, but you know what I meant. <laughs> um, right now, if your wife has a baby and she works for Barnett or she works for anybody, you get two weeks paid. You get two weeks paid off, fully paid, fully paid before you have to use your own vacation time. I know that when my wife had, we had babies. I was burning my own vacation time. It was something very important to me. And I tried to make this as family and oriented contract as I could. I was thinking in terms of a family man trying to go in and settle a contract. And that's why the dental is improved the way it is. That's why the optical is improved the way it is. There's paternity leave now. And, and, and the most perhaps the most costly benefit item in this contract to the company, other than the wages, is the lifetime spousal benefit. If you're a transit worker right now and you retire at 56 years old and your spouse is 50, and you pass away a year later, and everybody in this room has seen that happen. Everybody knows that happens. Transit workers don't live. We, we don't live in retirement. We do grueling work. We breathe in all kinds of crap. We're under, we're under stress that nobody nobody realizes. Nobody. If you, you retire at 56 years old, and you and your wife is five years younger, or your husband's five years younger, whatever it is, my wife told me actually. With somebody else. You, you, you retire at 56, and your spouse is 50 years old, and you pass away a year or two later, your spouse is guaranteed benefits until Medicare eligibility. The same exact benefits that we have. The union's been trying to get this for, for a long, long time. It was the, it was the last stumbling block with this contract. It was the last stumbling block with this contract. And the, the, the MTA conceded at the end, or when it conceded at the end, I signed the contract. Lifetime spousal benefits are an amazing benefit for us an amazing benefit. We retire, we have the peace of mind that our, that our, that our loved one is going to be taken care of once we're gone, whether we're here or not.